Hey everyone, Diavolo here, and today we're finally back after a few months break from Chainsaw Man to get straight into the dating Denji arc from the Academy Saga or Part 2. For those who like were curious as to where I was with Chainsaw Man, because I, I did see your comments asking why I hadn't uploaded anything, I had to wait for those chapters to build up and allow myself to fully binge the series so that I could drop a few videos in a row. After I completed my Chainsaw Man fasting, I can say that it was more than worth it. I always enjoyed sitting back and having my mind completely blown with just how creative this man actually is. And this arc is no different. It might be slower in some parts, but we get to see an old devil friend, Asa and Denji's characters finally connect on a different level, and Tam, the foreshadowing as to what comes up next is actually mental. So if you want more Chainsaw Man content, help push this video to 5k likes so I know you're all keen on the next arc, and subscribe if you are new around here. But either way, sit back and relax as we watch Asumi Taka make a complete fool of herself. So, kicking things back off inside of that silly old aquarium, Denji, still stuck with Asa, explains to her that the Eternity Devil has taken over the entire building, but she refuses to believe him. Having walked over 100 meters in a straight line, Asa wonders how long the hallway is. Denji tries to convince her that it is the Eternity Devil's thing. Still, she screams at him to shut up as she can't believe the fact that Denji is even a devil hunter, instead asking him to stop making things up while confidently claiming that she knows more as she's actually in the Devil Hunter Club. From a distance, the Devil Hunter Club members then all pull up alongside and even back up Asa by revealing that she actually knows a lot about devils. While Denji, who, you know, by the way, has no idea who the Devil Hunter Club members are, Haruka, the president of the group, introduces himself, but immediately gets cut off in a savage manner by Denji, who notices that Yoshida actually showed up as well. Standing there, Yoshida tells Denji that he ended up in this whole mess just because he wanted to check out some fishes at the aquarium, but got trapped there instead by a nasty devil. Seigi, or, or, or Segi, I, I really don't know this guy's name, I, I, I apologize, informs Yoshida that the guy who just turned up now turns out to be the guy who went from civilian devil hunter to public safety devil hunter while still in high school. Again, the student council president introduces himself, but just like last time he's cut off as Kabini's brother, Higashimaya, shows up and reveals that this isn't a dream, they're being attacked by a real life devil. On top of that, he reveals that he never really wanted to join the Devil Hunter Club, and that he only did so because his mother said it'd get him a scholarship. I love the freaking fact that, for some reason, this is so similar to the first time that we ever met the Eternity Devil, with Kobini freaking out, but now it's her brother here and everything, but also so different as pretty much every like, faucet of this story has changed in some kind of way. Anyways, it's explained that a devil's power makes the hallway go on forever, and the only way out is if they kill the devil or themselves. Wanting to know if they saw any devils beforehand, Denji asks, only to be told no. Asa remembering what the famine devil had previously told her, wonders if she should turn Denji into a weapon or kill Haruka, who she believes is the real chainsaw man. Asa full on believes that if she can actually kill him, then she could get her own body back from Yoru without turning anyone else into a weapon. Moving forth through the building now, the members of the Devil Hunter Club are able to obtain fish and water from an endlessly repeating staff room that they found. Together, they eventually figure out a way to cook by starting a fire with someone's lighter and the scrap newspapers that were lying on the ground. A few moments later, Asa reveals that she can't actually eat fish since it looks too much like a dead animal and it totally grosses her out. She hurriedly leaves the room and sighs in front of the door, before bumping into Denji who gives her a suspicious look. It turns out that Denji was just picking up a thousand yen bag from the ground, but Asa accuses him of being a thief. Filled with ill content for our vomit eating creep, Asa gives Denji a moral lesson while knowing almost nothing about the things Denji would actually do for money, or while continuing to argue with him. After a few tense moments between the two, where they both tell each other to go to hell, which I, I would just say is probably a massive foreshadowing in itself, Asa believes that she should really turn Denji into a weapon. After he leaves though, she stands there alone for a moment and confirms to herself that she isn't a loser like Denji and will continue to, and will continue to contribute to the Devil Hunters Club somehow. Back in the club room now, Asa takes out her mum's phone, looking for a signal, which of course got all of the group members excited. When Asa manages to find a signal bar for like one second, she immediately stretches out her arm in an attempt to find it again, but as everyone combs with just how lucky they are and that they're all going to be saved, Asa just ends up tripping over her own feet and falls to the ground. Guess, guess what, like it probably would have been fine if this wasn't some bung ass flip phone, but due to her mum skimping out on the modern devices, her phone snapped in half as it fell to the ground. Looking at just how pathetic Asa actually is, Haruka sighs and comments that he expected better from her. Instead, Asa complains all the time, failing to come through in clutch and always letting them down. 
Hearing this, Asa panics and immediately leaves the room to cry in isolation outside. Lying down now, Asa ponders whether the aquarium is from hell, since once you get in, there's no way out. The hallway goes on endlessly. You can't even flush toilets here, and to top things off, the fishes started rotting in their tanks this morning. Having moved into the hallway himself, Haruka throws some abuse at Asa for breaking their cell phone earlier, or else they would have actually escaped. Asa believes that Haruka is Chainsaw Man and asks why he doesn't just do something in that case, which actually confuses him as he wonders, like, what the hell she's even talking about? Pointing out the starter on his chest, Haruka clarifies that the starter is a surgical implant and it's one of the reasons why many people say that he's the person who comes closest to Chainsaw Man. That's why he's the president of the Chainsaw Man Society High School chapter, runner-up in the Chainsaw Man quiz show contest and owner of every piece of Chainsaw Man merchandise. Bro is an utter simp for Chainsaw Man. Anyway, just to make sure she's correct, Asa asks Haruka about being Chainsaw Man one last time, to which he starts hysterically laughing while telling her that if he was Chainsaw Man, they could have broken out of the hellhole in no time at all. Seconds after, he then begins screaming for Chainsaw Man to come and save him, sending a fat SOS signal to Denji, who's right around the corner yarning with Yoshida. As the two stand there in silence, Yoshida speaks up about how it's our boy Denji's cue to help Asa. Denji on the other hand reveals that he was able to kill the devil last time because the devil himself came at them, but the devil this time is nowhere to be found, so how can he even defeat it? All of a sudden, Yoshida then reveals a cell phone that he had also hidden, but points out that he hasn't been able to find a signal and feels like it's been over three days since they've been trapped inside the aquarium. In his eyes, everyone seems to have given up and Yoshida himself has also made peace with death this time. Turning to Denji, he asks if Chainsaw Man would eat the death devil for them, leaving our man with a spaced out look, clueless as to what Yoshida was even referring to. As time moves forth again, Denji goes over to Asa, who's actually sitting inside of one of the smaller fish tanks. He notes that all of the others are starting to lose it, but wonders how she's holding up internally. Hearing that she's hungry, Denji just tells her to eat some fish, but she refuses, claiming that she can't eat it. She also apologizes to Denji for asking him out on a date, explaining that it's her fault how they ended up in the situation, and how Denji probably has no idea that she's trying to turn him into a weapon. However now, even starving and pushed into a corner, she just can't do it. She reveals that she doesn't have the guts to do anything and has no idea what's right or wrong. Her entire below average life has just been one long string of attempts to avoid any mistakes and that's why she's just a total bore. Denji not overly concerned with what she's just muttering to herself, sits right in front of her and notes that yeah, she can't eat fish right. Then flipping out a starfish as if it's like the left leg of Exodia or something, he asks if Asa has ever tried this. Being our big brain neurodivergent genius, Asa immediately protests as starfishes are actually toxic and they have to be boiled first before eating them. Of course, you know, like, our boy right here is as resourceful as ever, so they look for a random pot lid and a pot to boil those starfishes in. While they're cooking these starfishes now, Asa notices tons of school hats lying right by her side. Denji reveals that he collected these hats to sell them after he gets out of the aquarium, causing our girl to question Denji's obsession with money. Denji clarifies that he just wants to support his sorta of friend, you know, sorta of little sister that's kind of living with him at the moment. Denji being the muppet he is, believes that Naota is smart enough to actually go to college and, because of that, is saving for her tuition. He also reveals to Asa that before he got to where he is now, his life was super crappy and all he wants is for her to have a normal one. Soon, the starfishes are fully boiled and ready and the duo starts smashing them back. Asa says that feeding on these starfishes isn't enough, but looking over to her right, she notices dried fish and after asking Denji, tries to eat them. She hesitates at first, but eventually manages to chow down with tears in her eyes. Thinking that this was fun, Denji says that everything Asa says is boring, but she's interesting to watch. Asa is confused by this statement until the power of self-confidence hits her, causing her to stand up and say that Denji has a good eye for people, and with this new level of confidence flowing through her, she says that she's charming, isn't she? Our simple boy Denji tells her how he loves Asa's attitude and reveals how it reminds him of an old friend who's most likely, obviously, power if you look into the statement here a little bit. May her soul rest in peace. After munching on the dried fish, Asa asks for Denji's help to find a way out of the aquarium. Asa explains the plan, which is nothing more than to collect money. Rushing down the hallway now, Denji further discusses their plan and how there is a thousand yen in a backpack on the ground and there is also a wallet with 14,000 yen inside it back at the lounge. Asa, who was previously giving Denji a moral lesson in theft, now also wants to steal money in order to escape the aquarium. 
pushing forth, it's shown that as the two rob the Eternity Devil over and over again, they're having the best time of their lives, joking around and laughing together. After they're done collecting a bag full of money, like I think it's a million yen, Asa asks for the entire bag. Denji hesitates at first since he's given away such a large amount of money, like it's literally over a million yen, but she manages to persuade him by saying that she'll grant him any request once they do escape. Immediately, Denji then gives away all of the collective money to Asa. While grabbing the bag, she asks Denji to listen to her for now, so go over and stand in the corner with his eyes closed and ears covered. Doing exactly what he's told like the simp he is, Denji walks over and stands up against the wall. Telling herself to have some confidence, Asa reminds herself that regardless of how absurd the reason he may seem, it ultimately comes down to her own perspective. She urges herself to have faith in her abilities and decides to set aside the million yen bag to purchase the aquarium. With her eyes still closed and the bag along with Denji seemingly vanished, she places her hand against the glass and commands the aquarium spear. Money is obviously a sensitive topic to talk about, but while Denji is still skeptical about his decision of handing over the money to Asa, he still believes that after obeying her, he will get what he wishes for, so it's all good. Randomly, Denji sees a penguin coming his way, so he reaches out and starts playing with her. Suddenly, Denji holding this cute little penguin along with all of these students appear outside of the aquarium. Obviously, this was thanks to Asa, who managed to weasel her way out of the original conditions. If you forgot, like, the original conditions, they were that Asa had to kill the Chainsaw Man in order to leave the aquarium. As you know, obviously, that was what the Famine Devil told her right at the end of the last arc. Anyway, the Eternity Devil then randomly shows up right in front of her and screams that this wasn't the deal. You can't buy an aquarium with a measly 1 million yen. Seeing the Devil towering over Asa, Yoshida quickly intervenes and saves our girl. Having closed her eyes previously, Asa transforms into Yoru, who, having read Asa's memories, notes that of course she'd feel guilty for destroying an aquarium. Darting at her, the Eternity Devil screams for her to die. However, Yoru easily manages to defend herself with the aquarium spear and, while getting ready to throw it, asks if the Devil was sure one million wasn't enough. At last, Yoru sends the spear flying forth, which, in a matter of moments, connects and sends a plethora of sharks and other marine life flying everywhere. In turn, this attack also defeats the Eternity Devil and leaves everyone nearby baffled with the change in Asa. Atop a nearby building, Famine remarks that, well, that idea went to hell. Then looking down, her eyes gaze catches Yoshida and the two begin staring at each other. After the battle comes to a conclusion, Asa thanks Denji for walking her home while calling out the worst date ever. However, surprisingly Denji actually enjoyed the date as he got to touch a penguin in the end. Awkwardly, Denji brings up the request part again and asks if Asa would still grant him any request. Intrigued, Asa asks him what kind of request it was. Standing there, Denji was filled with excitement as he proposed going on another date with Asa. You might have thought Denji was going to ask for something lewd, but no, he has his head set on straight for the first time in his entire life. With his extensive dating experience, he eagerly volunteered to be her guide, promising to show her the ropes of creating the most memorable and extraordinary outings. Well, I honestly don't know if he actually has much dating experience. All of it kind of sums up to just him being with the most dangerous woman in the verse. But Asa's face instantly lit up with a gentle smile, her heart beating rapidly with anticipation. It was at that moment that Yoru realized she might be on the verge of actually falling in love. However, even as Asa's emotions swirled within her, she remained cautious. Putting up her guard, Yoru confessed to Asa that she had never expected to develop feelings for someone as unconventional and rough around the edges as him. It's only plausible because she shares in Asa's feelings as well. Still, in her crazed eyes, she believes that they can continue with the original plan. Confused, Asa lowers her head before randomly walking forth and affectionately patting Denji's head. With her hand on his head, it's revealed that Asa and Yoru had switched places, and in that moment, she chants the words, Denji, Spinal Cord Sword. But it doesn't seem to work at all. Denji's confusion persisted as Yoru stood there continuously patting him on the head while saying Denji's spinal cord sword, expecting it to trigger a transformation. Almost every lady Denji has ever encountered has tried to destroy him and turn him into a tool. Funnily enough, Yoru's effects proved to be fruitless, leaving Denji perplexed and unsure of what's even happening to him. Attempting to make sense of the situation, Denji gently patted Asa on the head, then, with the same sense of uncertainty, copied the words Asa Spinal Cord Sword, before walking off and joking that this was a fun way to say goodbye. Later on, and in a separate conversation now, Asa and Yoru exchanged thoughts on Denji's inability to transform despite their efforts. Well, well, what can we say? Denji is quite literally built different, and on a serious note though, it was probably something to do with her feeling some kind of way about our man now. 
Frustration filled their voices as they mentioned how annoying the situation was. Thinking on it, Asa questions if it means Denji doesn't like her that way. Not that it really matters since she totally doesn't like him either. Nevertheless, Yoru points out that they both share emotions, which is a new thing for her. Still, they will take their time to actually win Denji's heart while searching for Chainsaw Man on a larger scale. Yoru states that it's probably best they get some sleep. However, Asa brings up the girl who trapped everyone inside of the aquarium, and if she was related to Yoru. Yoru clarifies that she was the famine devil, and she actually hadn't seen her in a while, hence why she didn't recognize her initially. Exhausted from their efforts, Yoru collapses on their bed, wanting to rest. However, Asa, even mindful of personal hygiene, offered a well-intentioned suggestion. She gently advised Yoru to take a bath before settling down to sleep later. After doing so, Asa and Yoru then went back to bed, her mind consumed by thoughts of Denji and the conflicting emotions his words had stirred within her. She pondered over his heartfelt expressions, spoken seemingly in contradiction to his lack of fondness for her. Asa's frustration grew, fueled by the belief that if Denji truly did dislike her, he shouldn't have said such a sincere and compassionate statement. She wrestled with the complexity of their relationship, finally ending on the take that she's quite unsatisfied with how irritating he is and actually hates him. After a while, and probably the next day after class, Asa goes out and reunites with his squad, where Denji shares the ideas of his super best date ever. Denji suggests the idea that he and Asa should watch mummy movies non-stop till 2am for only 2,000 yen. 2,000 yen though, that's like 20 bucks, and in Asa's eyes, renting movies out would be much easier and more convenient. She also shares the fact that she doesn't like pricey dates. Slightly bummed out that she didn't go with his plan initially, Denji agreed to her plan and panics when Asa suggests going over to his place since it's even cheaper that way. Blown away with like the change in events, Denji awkwardly tells Asa that there will be a few rules she has to follow if she does come over. With her questioning this, he reveals that you can't break these rules no matter what, because if you do, in the worst case scenario it could result in her death. Sneaking up behind the duo, Haruka, who had been eavesdropping on their conversation, gets alerted when he hears Denji mention that someone can die. The much awaited day had finally arrived when a girl was scheduled to visit Denji's humble abode. As anticipation filled the air, Denji took a moment to caution Asa about a rule named Unbreakable Rule 1. He emphasized the importance of refraining from opening any other apartment door, ensuring that their privacy and the sanctity of their neighbor's spaces were respected. As Asa stepped inside, our simp boy Denji guided her towards the cozy seating area right in front of the television. Just as the excitement settled in, Denji revealed the existence of a second rule, which is to refrain from opening the refrigerator. But Asa already knew all too well the common sense of never invading the sacred territory of another person's fridge. With the atmosphere brimming with curiosity and amusement, Denji proceeded to disclose the most vital rule, which he shared the delightful news that his roommate, a lover of furry friends, had ventured out to walk their beloved dogs. He also added how his roommate is somewhat of a problem child. So, no matter what happens, Asa is prohibited to make out with him in front of her. Sitting there and, and gradually getting more and more annoyed, Asa starts sarcastically asking Denji whether he thinks she likes him, to which Denji responds that he's been thinking about how she asked him out on a date, so I figured that she must 90% like him. Without any further discussion, Asa goes defensive mode and clarifies that there is no way she likes him. In fact, it's actually the contrary. She hates Denji more than anything. Asa reveals that just like Denji, she also has rules. And this one is that he needs to stay away from her or else he'll just end up dead. In an attempt to divert Denji's attention away, Asa confesses that she initially agreed to the date with Denji as a means of distracting herself, fully intending to leave right after watching the movie together. As time passes, the weight of this revelation finally dawns on Denji, causing him to question whether Asa had been using him all along. Doubt begins to creep into his mind, wondering whether he's somehow been at fault for all of the current predicaments. As all of these thoughts swirled in Denji's head, he can't help but recall a distant memory. Someone had once remarked that he smelled like dog, but rather than taking offense to it, he'd mistaken it for a compliment. Now, in deep thought, he wonders if there was more to that comment than he initially thought, as his unique scent played a role in the way others perceive him. The question lingers on his mind, adding another layer of self-doubt to his already tangled emotions. As Denji thinks about his complicated situation, he came to a simple conclusion. Asa must dislike him because of the way he smells. Despite this, despite this, Denji couldn't deny the fact that he, he did slightly like her, but if this is how it is, then... That's that, and honestly, that's how, that's how it is for guys most of the time, or at least that's how it was for me. If a girl turned around and was like, I don't like you, it's like, well, ah, oh, damn, that kind of sucks, but I guess i got to move on and try something else. No idea if she was actually being serious or not.
Anyway, with a resolution to improve himself, he decided to stop sleeping with the dogs, which is actually insane in my opinion for someone who sleeps with dogs. However, just as he contemplated the absurdity of these changes, which is like, of course he does, a surprising twist occurred. Asa, transformed into Yoru, leaned forth and passionately kissed him out of the blue. Denji's mind reeled with astonishment, trying to make sense of the sudden turn of events. Like, man is like, what's going on? This was his one and only dream. Yet, before he could fully comprehend the situation, the door suddenly opened and a pack of dogs entered the apartment. Turning around and screaming as the dogs began running for them, they notice a short shadowy figure standing in the doorway. Then, just when the situation really couldn't get any worse, Nayuta had appeared, and guess what? She came back to the apartment and witnessed Denji's lewd makeout session with our uh, good old Asa over here. Pointing her finger forth, and while calling Asura a thief, a random chain appears from the tip of her finger that shoots forth and implants itself directly into the brain of the war devil. To Denji's astonishment, Yoru immediately hops on all fours and fearlessly unleashed her own inner dog, barking back at the rowdy canines in front of her. What caught our boy more off guard though, was the fact that Yoru's barks proved to be a secret weapon, silencing all of the dogs and leaving them utterly dumbfounded with the change in this human. Nehuta, having witnessed it all, burst out into an evil kind of laughter. Annoyed, Denji, who somehow didn't figure it all out, demands to know what Naota had done, to which the child proclaims that she had turned her into a dog. Denji demands the reasoning as to why she'd even do that, and Naota just casually states that it's because she put spit on her property. Baffled, Denji screams that he's, he's literally his own property, and demands that she turn his friend back this instant. Naota though denies it to start with, but after Denji offers to cook her something, she agrees to turn her back later. As time skipped forth, it's shown that like every other puppy, Yoru had fallen asleep between the dogs while cuddling them. On the other hand, Denji and Naota have a meal amidst their own chaos. Denji asks Naota to turn her friend back into her original self. But knowing that every girl Denji's ever met has tried to kill him, questions what makes her different. After hearing Denji's lax reply, Naota states that she will return her to normal. However, only if Denji abides by two conditions. First, she demands to be able to eat ice cream every day, while the other requires Denji to never get friendly with Asa. Naota's reasoning for this is that she simply doesn't like Asa's scent. Denji asks if she smells like a wet dog, obviously man's just trying to reconfirm his previous doubts, and Naota screams back at him that wet dogs actually smell nice. To fix everything that has happened back at their apartment though, Naota explains that she'll alter Asa's memory so she thinks Denji stood her up back at school. Denji gets a bit worried about this, since Asa might end up hating on him, but Naota reiterates that he's done with her either way, so it's not like that even matters. After completing the memory alteration, we see Asa standing right in front of her high school, thinking that Denji had stood her up. Confused with it all, Yoru just pushes her feelings aside and thinks it's best that they start targeting a different boy. On the way home now, she doubts herself, thinking that he must have forgotten. Not that she'd ever actually like care about that. This was all to warn Denji just to like just to stay away from her to begin with. Not like not that she totally liked him or anything. She totally didn't mean to spend that much money on dating. Plus, she also had to do her school homework, so Asa was kind of glad that she got stood up here. Nevertheless, she confesses to herself and acknowledges this feeling of longing to experience even the tiniest desire for human contact. But also realizes that such emotion arose solely due to being alone with someone of the opposite gender for an extended duration of time. So basically, those were her hormones talking. At the end of the day, Asa's priority is to beat Chainsaw Man and get her body back. Which means, there's no reason for Asa to be stuck on Denji, especially since she actually prefers solitude more than anything else. And that way, Asa might actually have an easier time attaining her own personal happiness without relying on Denji. After a while, and having returned to the school like a complete muppet, she starts to wonder what the hell is even wrong with her. All she should care about is getting her body back. Damn Fujimoto man, I don't know why, but these writings just always seem to resonate with me on like a different kind of level. That all enveloping fear of loneliness, just I think it just strikes some kind of chord within me. Could be the fact that I sit within a black shadowy box and record these videos all day, but either way, Breaking through that awkwardness, Yoshida randomly shows up asking, what's wrong with Asa, and why is she standing there? Then continuing with Yoshida's random randomness, he steps forth and asks if she'd like to keep him company for a bit. So that there brings us to the end of this dating Denji arc and the second arc, in, or second or third arc in part two of Chainsaw Man. It's getting super confusing right now, Tatsuki, with how you're deciding to switch things up with these different parts to your story and everything. 
but rereading this section of Chainsaw Man fuller made me realize just how similar both Asa and Denji are. Like the personalities are polar opposites, but the experiences they seem to go through are super similar and I'm enjoying it so far, just watching Asa having to like experience the eternity devil and then being turned into a dog like Denji was as well. And it's just all these, all these little things. Anyway, next time we're actually getting back into the hands and a little bit more of an exciting arc. I know this one was probably a bit of a, a dull arc for those who were hoping that some hands happened. It was more of just like a character building arc. Next time, and hopefully soon, I'll be back with the Falling Devil arc. So if you are interested and want me to like keep up to date with Chainsaw Man, then leave a like and try and help me in pushing this video to 5,000 likes, as it just shows that you guys are super keen on like those specific series. Also, if you are new around here and want content just like this, but for a multitude of different series, then make sure to subscribe. But either way, for now, it's been your professional degenerate Diavolo, and I'll see you all in a bit. Bye.